so what we have seen so far is that um, we have developed a quantum mechanical framework for understanding the light uh, uh, for understanding the phenomenon of light matter interaction and then uh, we obtained an expression for the rate of transitions happening in the matter upon shining light okay now in this process we discovered that the rate of transition for uh, a process in the presence of light uh, in the presence of light is um, in, I mean, is uh, exactly same when it goes from a lower energy to a higher energy or a higher energy to a lower energy or in other words it is immaterial uh, I mean the order of the energy is immaterial but uh, rather uh, what we uh, what matters is which states actually the transition occurs in between um, and then um, thereby giving rise to the phenomena of uh, stimulated emission we thought uh, we talked about it and then uh, given this uh, fact that the light can actually cause both absorption and um, emission equally likely then Einstein argued uh, through phenomenological uh, rate equations and then equating it to a, uh, the population distribution of um, Maxwell's at uh, thermal equilibrium. Um, he argued that there has to be spontaneous emission and he showed that if you do um, account for that only then you would be able to uh, you would be able to satisfy this uh, Maxwell Boltzmann distribution law. Um, <coughs> thereby we, we equated I mean we put in those uh, principles up wrote down the rat rate equations of um, uh, for describing the population dy dynamics between these two states and then uh, obtained an expression for the spontaneous uh, emission rate. Uh, and I told that we can actually experimentally measure these emission rates by measuring the fluorescence as a function of time in laboratory. But uh, in doing so I told that the problem with this whole description the phenomenological description of Einstein is that uh, you had to um, um, you had to uh, he has to invoke in a um, sort of a quasi arbitrary manner that there has to be a spontaneous emission it is kind of uh, telling that it has to come um, th without the framework and uh, with, with, without there being no I mean without there is no formal description of how this can actually come about. Now uh, in order to um, see that uh, it comes out naturally I told that we need to treat the light by itself in a quantized manner all right as I was uh, alluding to right in the beginning and this lecture is about that how do we go about treating light in a quantized manner and then use that description in <coughs> in light of our light matter interaction treatment that we have done with using time dependent perturbation theory or TDBT and then show that uh, spontaneous emission uh, does not have to be uh, arbitrarily put in and um, it, it comes out very naturally in this description all right. So, let us uh, uh, step in and see what this description is all about. The first thing that we realize is that uh, we are going to uh, we are going to uh, have to describe light or for that matter even the um, <coughs> chromophore or the atomic or the molecular system per se in terms of entities right. Um, so, in order to do this uh, the a formal description was put forth by um, somebody called a, a, a Russian scientist called uh, with an fork. So, uh, what he said was that just the way you would describe a uh, an Eigen kit as a state vector corresponding to an atomic or, uh, or a, um, an electronic energy or an energy state in general um, with energy uh, Eigen value of E n. If you we could uh, um, describe states num these are called the number states number um, 
where represented by let us say n k. Now, this corresponds to a state which holds n k particles n particles of k identity meaning. <coughs> so, here what we are talking about uh, n particles of kth kind that is uh, that is what um, we are talking about in terms of n k uh, particles of kth kind. So, we could odd if you were to order these um, Eigen kets or the Fox uh, states then they would be n k corresponding to n k particles. The nice thing about I mean since they are actually describing the number of particles you would expect it should be possible to have n k minus 1 as well as n k plus 1 right. It is one particle more and one particle less clearly you can go till a till a point where there are only 0 n k equal to 0 particles of kth kind right. So, now in this description uh, what we are um, uh, trying to order is really the particle numbers and we are uh, ordering I mean we are kind of um, arranging or shorting these states in terms of their particle numbers and then a corresponding operator if, if you are or to think of uh, would be to be able to tell you how many number of particles are there in a given state. It turns out uh, in order for us to write down an expression or write down an operator for that uh, we need to understand two other operators and I am going to um, just uh, state here and uh, <coughs> an operator a k cap just to denote that it is an operator. Um, we will call it as uh, <coughs> unhalation operator and adjoint Hermitian adjoint of this operator we call it as a k dagger or we call it as creation operator all right. Now, what, what do they do? They have the properties that when a k operates on a state n k generates or makes the um, moves the system from n k to n k minus 1 it annihilates a particle ok. And uh, uh, <coughs> these are um, um, these are all normalized basis kits. So, uh, they would uh, spit out some constant in here let us call it as C n the constant is C n all right. <coughs> Similarly, we can write down an expression for a k dagger operating on n k which is given by C m n k sorry uh, this is not k minus 1 here it is actually it is k minus 1 n k plus 1. It increases the particle count from n k to n k plus 1 ok. So, where k is the kth kind a k uh, kind of a particle ok k kinds of particles ok. Now, so uh, if you 
in in the diagram uh, that we where we have ordered these states in terms of increasing particle number then this would correspond to this operation the operation uh, of a k operating on n k would correspond to this process a process where uh, the system moves from n k to n k minus 1 this is you can um, represented uh, I mean carried out by this on uh, the a k cap while on the other hand n k moving to n k plus 1 is done by is thought is thought to be described by a k diagram right. This is the property of the operators by themselves ok. So, we start with uh, defining the operators such let say that have these properties. So, now it is convenient to think of that right because uh, if you are talking in terms of uh, uh, energy eigen kits then the measurement that you are going to talk in terms of uh, uh, that we are interested in physical measurement is about knowing what the energy is. In this case we are talking about Fox states or the number states then um, what we are actually interested in is manipulating these numbers or extracting these numbers right it, uh, just the way you want to increase the energy or decrease the energy by um, uh, by any uh, means of transitions here the transition would be corresponding to um, a creation operator or an annihilation operator making the system go from n k to n k plus 1 increase its number or in k to n k minus 1 to decrease its number all right. So, now once you define this then uh, we have a very interesting uh, <coughs> property again that I am going to state without necessarily um, proving you. We know that a k cap <coughs> takes the state um, from n k to one state below n k minus 1. Now, if I were to think of a sequential operation right where <coughs> I take the state one step down and then operate on with an a dagger I mean create. So, first you annihilate and then bring it back it turns out um, this is the this sequence of operation corresponds to uh, a number um, uh, it is a, 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 um, <coughs> it, it which is basically n k itself ok. Uh, again I have not I am I'm not going to prove this if you are uh, uh, perhaps towards the end of the course as a in an appendix video we can um, we can actually uh, investigate this later. However, um, what we for our discussion what we need to know is we need to know this as a property of a, this operators a k dagger and a k. So, um, <coughs> a k dog a, a k dagger a k when up, um, a k dogger a k corresponds to a simple number n k period that there is very simple um, um, operation. So, uh, clearly this is assuming that we are actually operating on an Eigen kit n k ok. Let us uh, go back this. So, I repeat the a k dagger a k that corresponds to n k number of so number of particles of kth kind in a state n any any um, so, it corresponds to just this number ok. Now, it is interesting then we can actually look at uh, what the values of the um, 
normalization constants Cn and Cm themselves are right. So, how do we uh, get them? So, let us look at uh, let us write down the uh, annihilation operator uh, first. So, what this corresponds to is a k a k operating on state n k giving you c n on n k minus 1. Now, we could um, right I mean left multiply this both the sides by the complex conjugate of a k dagger n, um, n k itself and since this is the Hermitian adjoint of I mean the a k dagger is the Hermitian adjoint of a k. Now, uh, if we were to multiply by the complex conjugate left multiply with the complex conjugate of n k right the star represents the complex conjugate. So, then what we will have is the bra vector n k a k dagger a k n k equivalent to see we have taken the complex conjugate of this right and we know this is equivalent to C n uh, n k minus 1. So, in uh, w what we could write is that n k minus 1 C n the complex conjugate C n n k minus 1. <coughs> now, uh, a k dagger. So, cap cap here. Now, a k dagger a k is is going to when operates on n k is going to give us the number n k itself. So, this is equivalent to is just a, a scalar. So, we can pull it out as n k a simple number Um, times n k equals c n <coughs> modulus square n k minus 1 n k minus 1. Remember these n k's are in general um, I mean these n these vector these kits are the normalized basis um, kits the Fox state of the Fox states. So, this equates to 1 and so is this thereby we have C we have an expression now for C n itself as under root n k. Similarly, we can actually proceed forward to obtain an expression for uh, and um, the uh, find out the value of C m. We will start out by writing down again the process of um, annihilation. The idea here is we want to uh, uh, proceed. We want to pro go uh, proceed forward and find out the uh, uh, expression for the normalization constant C m of the creation vector, hmm? not the annihilation vector. Creation vector. So, uh, but uh, the trick that we are going to use is we are still going. We are going to use a small trick, and we are still going to start with uh, annihilation vector. It's uh, annihilation operation itself. Um, a k operating on n k and we know that uh, corresponds to under root n k times n k minus 1 
oh, sorry uh, nk itself right the expression we have written before again uh, once again i repeat so we are um, <coughs> just the way we arrived at an expression for cn the normalization constant for the um, annihilation operator uh, you can uh, because of this now we, we would be able to um, write this whole process right a k dagger n k as under root n k n k minus 1 all right. <coughs> now, I want to go ahead and obtain as um, in a similar way in an uh, the expression for C m the normalization constant for the creation vector. Okay. Um, so, this C m the uh, so the procedure is pretty much the same except now here I am going to use a small little trick. The trick is I am going to start up with the uh, I am going to start up with the uh, annihilation operator again except now I am going to start from a state n k plus 1. Okay. Now, that is going to give me from my previous expression n k plus 1 as my con uh, normalization constant n k <coughs> at this point I am going to come and then operate with the creation operator a k dagger. Now, we can write that this as I am going to just to avoid writing the roots, I am going to write it as a half times oh, uh, <coughs> C m n k plus 1, right. So, this is simply because um, Operate, uh, operating on a dagger on both sides would correspond to me operating on a k dagger on n k from my previous line right from this line. So, this is coming here and sorry. Now, this is nothing but C m times n k plus 1 right. Now, that uh, this result is from our definition of the um, a dagger operator itself. Okay. So, if you go two pages back we have um, defined this right, right here a k dagger operating on a state n k all right a k dagger operating on state n k uh, gives us C m times n k plus 1 that is the definition of uh, our creation operators. right? So, now what we can do is that we can make use of that and then write down the expression as uh, the following. <coughs> uh, it is um, very uh, highly convenient. So, now what we can say is that this a k dagger a k right is our number operator. Okay. So, number operator spitting out the number corresponding to the state that it is uh, actually um, I mean it, it, it is going to so not operator but it is a num it is a it is going to give you a number that is actually correspond to the state n k plus 1 okay. when <coughs> and 
that is from our definition. So, it is going to be n k plus 1 times n k plus 1 giving you n k here. Okay. <clears throat> now, we what we could do is that we could rearrange this whole term for C m this gets cancelled giving <coughs> an expression for s C m as n k plus 1 on to the power half or in other words <coughs> we can write now safely a dagger as n k plus 1 to the power half time these are important um, relations. So, I would like you to pay attention to this expressions it is also good to uh, <coughs> number them and uh, box them. So, we I think uh, we were uh, looking at number equation number 10 I remember previously anyway. So, <coughs> let us uh, call this as our um, equation 1 for today. So, 1 and let us call this as equation number 2. So, <coughs> this uh, follows directly from our definition of uh, a k and uh, a k dagger. In general, um, what you can actually think of um, this as the, the, the number operator right the a k dagger operating on a k as um, uh, I mean um, <coughs> so in general a k and a j as uh, an operator that can be expanded in um, a basis of k and uh, j. Okay. These are called um, projection operators. So, you, if you um, if you think of uh, this expression operating on some state, okay, some superposition state. Uh, what uh, what this all, uh, does is that it is looking for the <coughs> uh, the component of the the j uh, component of the superposition state psi or chi along the j eight eigenstate and then multiplies that by the k. Okay. So, <coughs> this as you will see let when we were to look for um, a proof for the number operator becomes uh, pretty simple when um, the k becomes equal to that of j. Uh, uh, assumes the form of 
a number operator right basically um, of n k giving you um, the n k itself and nothing should have changed right because we are take the the eigen k i mean the n k basis should not have changed um, the because we have what all that we have done is we have taken the um, we operated upon the n k state brought it down by one number and then increased it by another uh, another number so we should go back to the n k but then uh, because of this whole operation what we have is that we know now how many number of uh, entities are present in this state n k okay so now that's very very convenient and why are we actually looking at numbers and uh, how is it related to the uh, light matter interaction that we said that we are actually uh, going to um, talk about that uh, has to do with <coughs> how we are going to use this process itself to um, explain both these entities the light as well as the matter in terms of um, their numbers right? and then saying um, how the number of these entities in different states or in different modes change as the interaction proceeds. So, uh, the way we will do that is uh, by using um, a small um, uh, description um, of this uh, entire process the light as well as the matter uh, in terms of these states right we will write down and then write an interaction Hamiltonian. Okay. So, this is something that I am going to again state once we do that then we will see how uh, it is quite natural um, in this description um, uh, that we can fit in various different processes. I mean the not just fit in the various different processes emerges from this description and uh, <coughs> um, the thanks to the simple uh, description uh, um, of this uh, the spontaneous emission uh, comes out uh, very naturally. We will do that in the next lecture. Thank you.